Aditya sir, uh, shall we start? Yes, good to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, good afternoon all. Uh, so welcome uh, uh, to the post lunch session. So today's session is about introduction to patents and patentability. So as we all know, the the importance of patents uh, is now um, because uh, earlier days, if you are a researcher, uh, you are weighted by the number of journals you publish, but now it is uh, through the number of patents you have. So that is the importance. And also uh, a patent agent is a new career which uh, technologists can look into. And the graduates who are graduating from the engineering profession can look into. So we have with us uh, to talk on all these uh, patents and patentability. Uh, Mr. Aditya Patel, he is associated uh, with Polaris Inc. and uh, is an Indian patent agent with substantial experience in patent drafting and prosecution. He is well versed with uh, patent practices and procedures in India, US, and Europe and specializes in patentability, prior art, and infringement analysis. In addition to this, he is experienced in freedom to operate and technology uh, landscaping. It is our pleasure to have you with us today for handling this session, sir. I extend a very warm welcome to you, sir Aditya, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, all. So uh, thank you yeah, so much, uh, Minakshi, yes, ma'am. I also, yeah, one more thing. I also extend a warm welcome to all the participants uh, who are attending today's, uh, uh, this session. And over to you, uh, Aditya, sir. Yeah, so uh, good afternoon, Minakshi, ma'am, uh, Shailaja, ma'am. Uh, and the entire RMC team, IEEE team, and of course, the attendees. So uh, thank you for introducing me uh, and I really feel fortunate uh, to get, become part of this RMC event. Uh, uh, I believe this uh, really is a platform uh, which fosters uh, the intellectual uh, interactions between the, uh, uh, between the colleagues and then uh, collaborations uh, between different teams and the end result will be uh, cultivating the innovation and the entre uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, I wish success uh, to the entire team, RMC team and IEEE team. All the very best to uh, you in uh, your coming chapters, coming conferences. Uh, with this, I think uh, let me jump into the topic of presentation. I think I really have a hard task today. Uh, because I am going to speak for an hour uh, on this theoretical subject uh, uh, immediately after the lunch break. And uh, as uh, many of us are actually sitting at our homes, uh, there is a chance that few of them uh, have already shifted from their desk to bed because it's a Saturday afternoon. Uh, anyways, I'll t try to uh, make the session as live as possible. And uh, I request participants to pose their questions in the comment box and uh, uh, we may take it uh, at the end of the session if it is okay. Yeah. So let me pull up my presentation. So uh just let me know Dash, if uh, you are able to see my screen uh, yes sir we are able to see mm, that's great so there is no technical problem right so my voice no. is appropriate my screen is visible right yes sir so we are good to begin right thanks yeah yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, today's topic of presentation is uh, patents uh, patentability and the patent searching. So as uh, Minakshi ma'am correctly identified, uh, this is the hot topic when it comes to innovation and entrepreneurship in recent years. So uh, there's just let me know if you're able to see this present uh, presenter's view or you're just able to see the slide. 
Uh, no, we, I'm able to see the preview. Uh, the next slide one. Okay, so you're able to see the entire screen, right? Yeah. And not just the presentation. Let me just figure out. So, uh, Dash, do you have any idea how to hide this uh, uh, presenter's view from? Uh, you can you can end the slide so and try to uh, reset the screen again. Yeah. Now try to present it okay. again. Yeah. Yeah. Now we are able to see. You can just present. Just a minute, I'll go back to this. I'll start. I'll stop presenting. I'll just present the. Now, just let me know if you're able to see. Hello there. From my end. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Yeah, it's rendering from my end. Is it visible now? Hello. 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 Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Is it visible now? Yeah. The screen is visible. Now you can start the slideshow. So even uh, now you are able to see the presenter's view. So you need uh, you are able to see this next slide and no notes. No, no, no. We are not able to see that. We are only seeing the slides. Okay, that's perfect. No. Okay. Uh, sorry for the technical glitch. Uh, yeah. So we will move ahead. Uh, so yeah. Today's agenda is uh, we will talk about patents, then the patentability criteria, and. Uh, how to perform the patent searches, why they are so important. So before we begin, I would just like to uh, start with the story of a college dropout. So here is a picture and a story of uh, Mr. Uddhav. Uh, so he hails from uh, the Lakhimpur district of Assam. Many, uh, many of you might have read about uh, him. And uh, uh, so he was often punished uh, uh, to stand outside the classroom because uh, he was asking so many questions to his mathematics teacher and very difficult question and random questions. Uh, he got admitted to engineering college uh, uh, for studying the mechanical engineering. But unfortunately, he could not complete the course because of uh, uh, the uh, lack of uh, 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 lack of financial uh, like it was a financial burden on his family. And at the age of 23, uh, he first ventured into manufacturing of polythene cover making machines and which otherwise was costing around six lakh rupees. So it was manufactured only by a US company. But this guy took a challenge and uh, manufactured this in India. Uh, along with uh, this success story, uh, you can read uh, on the slide that uh, he's a patent holder for promogranate uh, de-seeding machine, which was filed at the Indian Patent Office. And uh, he has received many awards, including NASA's prestigious technology award and uh, 
president's award for grassroots innovation uh, back in uh, 2009 so uh, this is really inspiring story you know and uh, but what exactly made this possible for uddhav so when i uh, try to dig down i could find three success factors attached with this story uh, the very first is identifying the problem uh, uh, and the need uh, of the society in general or society at large so he identified the problem the second is creativity in finding out the solution so this is the most important step and the third step uh, he just not let his idea go away into the public domain but he tried to uh, uh, secure it in the form of a patent he filed the patent application it was granted to him and then he could use it he could license it he could manufacture it and uh, he could earn uh, so much of money uh, out of that particular patent so uh, after this inspiring story and before we actually begin into what exactly is the patent uh, just don't forget all the great inventions are started with the great idea so idea is the mother of all the inventions or uh, uh, if i can say the intellectual property and what exactly is the form of your idea that uh, will uh, give you uh, the correct form of the ip so idea in the form of the expression uh, will give you the copyright the expression in terms of uh, uh, the poem uh, the story or the music composition yeah i think this has already been covered in uh, uh, the morning sessions but i would just like to touch upon in uh, uh, very quickly so idea in the form of invention the invention is necessarily in the process or the product and it has a technical characteristics then you get a patent then idea in the form of uh, uh, quality and the identity uh, which is given to a particular business then it would be treated as a trademark then idea in the form of appearance aesthetic appearance it qualifies for the design idea in the form of uh, uh, idea if you maintain it uh, uh, confidential or secret then it would be categorized into a trade secret you already know the coca cola formula the story behind that and how it has been kept as a trade secret for so many years i'll quickly jump into the main topic here uh, uh, so what exactly is the patent so here are here are more uh, here are uh, four main keywords uh, uh, for defining the patent it is a legal right though it is a technical in nature the document is technical in nature it gives you the legal right uh, which gives you the right to exclude the others from making using selling or offering for sale or importing the claimed invention in the country of the issuance it gives you the limited monopoly so uh, most mostly uh, uh, the patent uh, uh, will expire in 20 years from the date of filing it is a territorial right that means if you file the application in india you will be secured uh, uh, in india if you have the business in any other countries like us and china and japan you need to go there separately Uh, and file the us application japanese application a single indian application will not give you the protection in any other country so it is the right that has been granted by the land okay and uh, it is intangible asset yeah so uh, intangible is like just like uh, the tangible any other tangible asset uh, for example your house or a land uh, the patent can also be sold we call it as assignment and uh, it can also be licensed to someone else <clears throat> and in doing so the exclusivity ex- exclusivity rights which are with you or the patentee uh, they get transferred either for a definite period or indefinitely to a new uh, assignee or a new licensee and in return you get the payment uh, 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 of an agreed sale or a license fee so patent gives you the rights as we could see uh, in the earlier slide and along with that there are some obligations uh, that you need to uh, carry with so on the left hand side we again go with the rights like uh, and these are the exclusive rights to stop others from doing certain things uh, you can grant licenses assign rights or enter into the agreements 
the patent will give you the right to sue others from the infringement so if somebody is trying to venture into your area uh, technology then you can sue them and uh, take him to the court uh, you also have the right to surrender the patents okay and on the right hand side you have some obligations or exemptions so you need to disclose the invention it is uh, it is just uh, not the one way but uh you have to disclose something to the public in general and in return you get this monopoly uh you you have to use this inventions for government's own purpose uh, or for public services so whenever government thinks that it's essential for uh, for the government's use or a, a public at large then you'll have to uh, give away your patent to the government and the government can also uh, acquire your invention in certain conditions and uh, they can also ask to license your uh, patent to some third party compulsorily in some situations and uh, so if uh, your patent application is related to a defense or atomic energy uh, then definitely uh, you are prohibited or restricted from publishing this document into the public domain so this these are some obligations as you being the patentee Now let's understand why exactly we are talking about the patent. What are the benefits that are associated with filing the patent or getting the grant over your patent? So definitely the business incentives. So we are into a knowledge economy today, and uh, we have moved uh, from uh, uh, the labor-based economy. Once upon a time, we have moved from the product-based uh, economy in the recent times. Now we are into the knowledge-based economy, and definitely. uh the knowledge will serve you or yield you uh, or fetch you the money in future so for an example uh, i i would take an example of a company named sandwick so this is a swedish company you might have heard and uh, uh, <clears throat> to let you know this company earns 20% of its profit or uh, maybe 20% of its revenue profit may not be the right uh, word but revenue is the right word so 20% of the revenue is generated out of ip so it is interesting to know uh, uh, the driving power of this uh, knowledge economy uh, yeah the startup a new company i would again like to mention one example of uh, a very good good friend of mine i was uh, he was my client when i, I was uh, serving a law firm uh, earlier uh, so kiran he hails from uh, solapur a small district in maharashtra and uh, uh, so we all drive the scooters and the motorcycles and uh, especially the pillion riders who are sitting behind uh, they always need to take the footrest out of uh, the collapsed position so especially for women or elderly people uh, it becomes very difficult and sometimes they have to use their hands they have to dirty their hands to take this footrest away from the uh, resting position so Uh, uh so this guy uh, kiran he identified the exact uh, problem and he came out with a solution wherein uh, he provided this footrest uh, having the ha- ha- having the provision that w- with a single gentle push it can just come out so it was a mechanical invention we filed that application it uh, we could get him the uh, grant of the patent and now this kiran who was earlier uh, Uh, into the restaurant business he is now driving a company who who uh, is into consulting and manufacturing of such footrests so this is the power of uh, i moved away from the slide i'm sorry uh, so this is the power of the patent uh, protection against the imitators again the example uh, so when i was a part of tata motors we came across one uh, uh, one case wherein uh, the range rover the front fascia of the range rover it was copied in china uh, by the company named as landwind uh, so we fought the case in china and we could get uh, 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 we could get the good amount of uh, money out of that infringement case uh, then the brand value you have the uh, you, you have the uh, brand name in front of you apple so apple earns most of their money out of the innovations or the inventions that they have protected and it increases the brand value that apple has today uh, source of the recognition yeah it uh, provides you the source of recognition in the form of the certificate that has been given you or awarded you uh, by the central government so what is an invention so 
Be, before going into uh, this question, uh, let me tell you that a mere idea is not a patentable subject matter. So the invention is, now what is the difference between the idea and the invention? So the invention is a concrete solution to the problem while the idea is an abstract solution to the problem or it idea may be a problem itself. So if you can describe how to make and how to use your solution so that someone else uh, does not have to guess how to make and use your solution, then your solution is uh, called as an invention. So enablement is something uh, uh, which is added to the idea to make it as invention. So just uh, let me give you an example. Idea is something uh, instead of heating the water on a gas stove, let me use the electric uh, water geyser. So this is just an idea of heating the water with the uh, electric geyser. But does it qualify for the invention? So answer is no. So the idea has to get converted into the invention by the clause of enablement. And when we talk about enable, enablement, we need to write about uh, the components of your electric geyser, such as uh, uh, the inlet through which the cold water may come in, uh, the outlet uh, through which the hot water may go out, and then the coils or the anode rod, then the temperature sensors and different walls, uh, outflow pipe, overflow pipe. So uh, the basic is uh, how you enable your idea and convert it into the invention. Okay, so this was uh, the difference between the invention and uh, the idea, a uh, mere idea. So uh, the Patents Act, Section 2, 1J, uh, talks about the invention. So invention means a new product or a process, and it should involve the inventive step, and it should be capable of industrial application. So what exactly the inventive step? It has been described just below Section 21J and it is Section 21JA. So inventive step is nothing but a feature of an invention. It is not entire idea or not entire invention. So believe, believe me or trust me that you do not get a patent on the entire concept. So it is just a feature or just a part of the entire concept which turns out to be a patentable subject matter. It is written into the claims, it is claimed, and ultimately the government will grant you the patent for that small incremental step out of the entire uh, idea or the entire invention that you have derived, okay? So inventive step is nothing but a feature of an invention which involves a technical advance. So the word technical here is very crucial. It should not be very abstract idea. It should not be a very abstract solution, but it should be technical in nature. So it should involve a technical advance as compared to the existing knowledge. <clears throat> okay. So you'll, you'll have to move further one step uh, to call it as an invention or an inventive step. Then it should have an economic significance or both. So both here uh, refers to the technical advance as well as the economic significance, right? And the last point is uh, it should make the invention not obvious to a person skilled in the art. So what is this non-obviousness criteria? We will, uh, 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 we will go in detail in uh, coming slides. So this was all about the invention. And I'll move on to the next point. So when we talk about the patentable inventions, uh, these are some key aspects which you need to go into or look into before you file the patent application. So uh, I'll start from the top. So the subject matter, what exactly is the subject matter disclosed in the invention? That is very important. Again, there is a separate slide to discuss about this subject matter, but very briefly, any technical process, any technical method, any technical product in the form of a device, a component or an assembly or a machine is something which is a patentable subject matter. Uh, then I'll come to the right hand arm. It should be a useful to the public in general. Okay. And it should be uh, man, uh, it should be able to manufacture it in uh, industrial or industry at a large scale. Then uh, uh, the novelty it should be a novel. It should not be published into the public domain uh, uh, prior to the filing of the application. And on the left hand side uh, we talk about the obviousness. And uh, if the answer is yes to all these questions, then definitely you have the patentable inventions. 
we will uh, talk about this patentability in coming slides as well so uh, what exactly is the novelty so as i told you earlier it should not be available to the public in any way before the filing date of the patent okay and it should not be described in any publication before the date okay so when we uh, uh, when we say it should not be published uh, the publication may be in the form of the patent maybe in the form of any ieee paper maybe for in the form of uh, an uh, ad in the newspaper so uh, or a many uh, or a simple message a whatsapp message to a group at large may uh, uh, may kill the novelty of your application uh, let's come to the uh, inventive step which is very subjective in uh, its nature and uh, we call it as obviousness uh, the case of obviousness so uh, it is a test whether it is uh, uh, open to the eye or mind and perfectly evident to a person thinking on that subject so let's take an example uh, so you have invented something a plus b and a is known in and the first prior art prior art is nothing but a single document you can consider which is already there in the public domain so a is already known in one document b is individually known in the second document now merely combining this a plus b will it be considered very obvious for a person who is skilled in that particular domain of technology so if the answer is yes to this question so if i think that combining this a plus b is very obvious as an electronics engineer then i would say that it is very obvious and there you kill the inventive step of your patent application right and if the answer is no to this question like uh, no this combining a and b is something which is not very obvious and it requires a special skill to come out with this a plus b then i would say that uh, no this is not an obvious thing and there you get the inventive step right so this is a test of obviousness and to whom uh, uh, it is obvious so who can test this whether the subject is very obvious or not definitely a skilled technician acquainted with uh, the techniques in that particular technology domain the inventors themselves they can argue and uh, the experts uh, in the field of uh, that particular technology there is always an objection to this particular obviousness or inventive step uh, when you get the fer like the first examination report and uh, then uh, the examiner or the controller uh, is the person who decides whether it is obvious or not obvious and then uh, as a inventor or a applicant you need to argue with him and you need to prove him that how uh, the mere combination of two things Uh, uh is like my application is beyond the mere combination of two things okay so this was the obviousness test and the second important factor of uh, deciding this patentability criteria the third is about the subject matter now we spoke that uh, any process or product uh, in the form of technical contribution or a technical having the uh, technical advance is something uh, called as a patentable subject matter now let's see what exactly uh, is not a patentable subject matter uh, so section 3 essentially lists down all the exemptions uh, of the patentable subject matter uh, so first is uh, frivolous or contrary to the well established natural laws so frivolous means uh, or uh, uh, contrary to well established natural law means uh, you can imagine a machine which will give more than 100% of the performance or the efficiency which is not possible practically so it is against the uh, natural law okay so it is not patentable uh, then second is contrary to public order or morality uh, which causes the serious prejudice to human animal or plant life you can take an example of a gambling machine which is against the morality of a human being okay so it is not patentable the third is a, a discovery of a scientific principle uh, maybe a newton's law is not patentable a new form of a known substance so i have combined two three sections here just to simplify the things uh then coming to the fourth point mere admixture of components uh, you can speak about uh, the mere solution of a sugar and a color additives in water uh, to form a soft drinks 
so unless and until it gives uh, some uh, uh, some effic- uh, efficacy then it would not be treated as a uh, uh, patentable subject matter it would be treated as simple admixture mere admixture then fifth point is mere arrangement or rearrangement or the duplication of the known devices so when we talk about mere uh, uh, rearrangement i can give you an example of uh, the umbrella with a fan or the helmet with a torch embedded into it so these two are individual components and uh, merely combining them to form a single component or a device doesn't give you the uh, uh, patent Uh, then the method of agriculture or horticulture is not patentable a uh, process for treatment uh, medicinal treatment surgical treatment or uh, curating uh, curative treatment so i say that i have uh, the novel treatment of uh, uh, curating the cancer then it is not a patentable subject matter uh, then the plants and animals in whole are not patentable the ninth clause is very important when we come to engineering uh, uh engineering cases a mathematical or business method or a computer program per se or algorithms is not patentable uh so the uh, the computer program per se or the algorithm this is the first objection that we get uh, when we file any uh, particular patents related to computer science or uh, uh, or it sector so earlier the patent office was very strict in uh, rejecting this applications but nowadays uh, with the new guidelines cr guidelines computer related invention guidelines which have been published recently by the uh, patent office uh, i think they are now uh, more uh friendly in allowing uh, these types of patents so uh, earlier there was a clause of having uh, the novel hardware with uh, the software but now uh, they are only looking into uh, the essence of uh, uh, essence of the technical advance so if you're solving a technical problem with a technical solution having the technical means not necessarily the hardware has to be a new here but any technical means solving the technical problem and uh, you're getting the technical advance if you can prove this then you'll get the patent on this subject matter as well uh, then coming to the next point a literary dramatic musical or artistic work uh, these are the subject matters of the copyright and not patentable and then uh, topography of the integrated circuits again is a not patentable subject matter now we will come to the question when exactly to, to file the patent application uh, so uh as the rule says uh, once you are uh, done with the commercial working and the enablement enablement clause you're go uh, you're good to go uh, uh, and file the patent application so there are risk in avoiding this particular situation and filing the patent application before you enter into the market the major risk is the other invention of the substantially same nature may come up before you and he might file the application before your debt and then uh, as the law says the first to file gets uh, the right over it it is not the first to invent but it is first to file always remember this uh, then uh, the inadvertent publication of the invention by the inventor himself or maybe somebody uh, from his team it may cause the damage to the novelty of the invention and as you know when it is published into the public domain uh, the novelty is lost and your own publication will act as a prior art uh, to your patent application <clears throat> uh, so as i said the the thumb rule is patent should be filed before any kind of publication or commercial use uh, or communication to the public okay so uh, let me move to the next one uh, the types of the patent application so there are mainly two types the provisional application and the complete patent application so when exactly to file the provisional application and when exactly to uh, to file the complete application let's go into the details so provisional is something a low cost way uh, to establish the early effective filing date uh, with fewer formalities consider a situation wherein uh, you have come up with the solution to a problem particular problem uh, and you think that uh, this may not be the end of my research uh, the research may take some more months and i could refine this uh, solution so there could be a better way of solving this particular problem let me take few more months and come up with the refined solution but parallelly i do not want to lose the priority of my application so here is a good chance to file the provisional application so provisional application will 
secure the date okay because the date is most important okay and uh, and then probably within uh, 12 months from filing of the provisional application you can uh, file the complete specification you can com uh, convert the same into the complete specification by filing the claims and the other necessary forms and documents uh, it is basically uh, <clears throat> Uh, you just need to uh, 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 write the specification and drawings. No need to write the claims. No need to establish the claims on anything. You get the 12 month window to file the complete specification. Uh, your priority will still be intact before uh, expiry of the 12 months. And uh, yeah, you will lose the priority uh, for any new matter that is filed subsequent the complete specification and uh, the provisional will automatically get abandoned uh, uh, before the expiry of the 12 months if it is not examined and the uh, just hold on for a minute malik ardha tas lagel mi atta uthu nahi shakat tanna thode request karta एक अर्धा तास दे मला आय एम सॉरी या सो कम्प्लीट पेटंट ऍप्लिकेशन इज समथिंग अ टेक्नो लिगल डॉक्युमेंट विच डिस्क्राइब्स अँड स्पेसिफिकली क्लेम्स द इन्व्हेन्शन सो इट इसेन्शियली कन्सिस्ट ऑफ द क्लेम्स द क्लेम्स डिसाइड द लिगल बाउंड्री ऑफ युअर इन्व्हेन्शन या so where exactly uh, to file the patent application so there are three different routes you can take uh, the national one and the paris convention and the pct one national is something which uh, you file it in india uh, being the resident and citizen of india the paris convention is nothing but this is a treaty this has been signed by uh, uh, like a large number of countries wherein uh, one application if you file it in india you get uh, uh, 12 months uh to file the same application in the other countries uh, on and uh, still the priority would be uh of your original application uh the pct application provides you the path in filing uh, your application single application in multiple countries and uh, keeping uh the priority date secured uh i'll not go into the details of this application because filing uh, would be uh, the different a topic all together of presentation so there are four indian uh, patent offices located at delhi kolkata mumbai and chennai so nowadays you don't really need to go to uh, file these application in uh, different uh, locations because uh, uh, 90% of the applications gets filed gets filed through e filing portal you need to have the digital signature with you uh, uh, to file this application through e filing portal so this is the general procedure uh, to file the application in india so uh, once you are done with the priority search uh, you can uh, you are ready to file the application so uh, normally it gets published into the public domain after 18 months after the filing date but there is an option to pay the extra fees and uh, you can get it published earlier uh, when say 15 days or a month so what is the reason behind publishing this document into the public domain so uh, people at large would like to examine your application before actually the controller or the examiner looks into your application just cause if they have any concerns with your application they can come up and they can uh, oppose the grant of your patent application okay so uh, after the publication and till uh, uh, till the examination starts anyone or any interested party can come and oppose the grant of the patent uh you need to file the request for examination the patent will the application will not automatically get examined by the controller but you'll have to pay the fees uh, to get it examined then the examination would start and uh, generally the examiner would examine it he would send the report to the controller which in turn would uh, uh, generate the afr first examination report and send it to the applicant or the agent uh, which uh, which consists of uh, maybe the substantial uh, 
substantial objections or the formal objections you need to respond to that and if the controller is agreed with your arguments then he would straightforward uh, proceed for the grant of application or uh, he would uh, give you the chance of hearing okay uh, then uh, there would be a publication into the official gadget uh, of the indian patent office and the government okay after the grant of the patent within 12 months uh, uh, any interested party can oppose the grant of the patent by filing the post grant opposition that is altogether a different route uh, i'll move on to the next one the success story uh, before we begin uh, with the search process uh, i would just like to highlight the success story of this elliot re uh, rise uh, who is the serial inventor the story is is an inventor entrepreneur and the author of this book stealing the borders so his ms in engineering uh, electrical engineering from new york university and he has written a, a nice sort of biography titled stealing the borders he filed the us patent on call forwarding technology so everyone is aware of this call forwarding technology so this is uh, not a rocket science in today uh, in today's era but definitely in 1981 this was something which was very inventive and out of the box idea so he filed the us patent uh, surprisingly he could not prove this technology to be worth of use as nobody believed uh, uh, in his invention and there was no prototype built for the demonstration and uh, finally in 1994 after 13 years of struggle he could license this patent to nine different companies telecom companies including AT&T and he earned 2.5 million dollars at that time uh, through this licensing so this is the power of the patent and this is uh, uh, one of the rarest success story that we could hear okay now coming to the last segment of my presentation uh, uh, the patent searches why they are important so this is all together a, a, a different vertical different career path you can take uh, as a patent analyst as a patent searcher so uh patent searches are uh, required to find out what exactly others are doing at this particular moment uh, they could be useful in planning certain things like uh, find out the white space uh, where exactly i can go and i can establish my business okay where th there is exactly the less crowd or uh, less footprints and i can easily go and uh, create my white space or create my footprints there a uh, development of the product uh, like uh, you can uh, conduct the patentability searches and work arounds uh, before the launch of the product in pre launch phases uh, you need to uh, find out the patents to find out whether you are free to operate by conducting the freedom to operate search i have a good case to discuss on this uh, freedom to operate i'll uh, discuss in this in the later slides uh, then the post launch uh, you might uh want to enforce your patent rights on somebody else's by filing the infringement suit or something else uh you need to evaluate your patent uh, how exactly the amount that you have spent and uh, what is the current value of your well uh, patent uh, in view of the other patent applications similar applications so at this different uh, uh stages the patent searches are really important to carry so this was the case i was talking about ignorance to due diligence uh, could invite the trouble so this this is the famous case i think 90% of the people from this uh, field uh, ip field would know about this bajaj versus tvs so in 2007 uh, tvs announced the launch of uh, this two spark plus based uh, motorcycle they named is a uh, named it as flame if i am not wrong uh however on the uh, very next day uh, bajaj claimed that it is a theft of their patent application which was granted to them and uh, it was on the similar technology like two spark plug engine uh, technology uh, they had filed it in 2001 i believe and it was granted in 2005 by the patent office so bajaj eventually filed an infringement suit before the madras high court and then uh, madras high court uh, granted uh, the interim injun injunction uh, uh, which did not allow uh, tvs to manufacture and sell uh, any single unit of the flame into the market 
eventually after fighting in the court and outside uh, the court uh, the court uh, the case was uh, settled in november 2019 by both the parties uh, mutually outside the court so now the impact on tvs uh, just ignoring the due diligence just ignoring whether they are free to operate in the market they just moved ahead and uh, launched their vehicle without the study tvs could not produce a single flame in last 10 years or maybe uh, that could not see the uh, light of the day and all the investment for more than 1000 millions in tooling r&d and goodwill it gone west so the learning quick quickly here is before you launch any product into the market uh, it is uh, it becomes very important to conduct the freedom to operate search to find out whether your product is infringing anybody else's patent rights what exactly is the prior art i have been talking about the prior art which is already available in the uh, domain but uh, or the public domain what exactly is that so it is any information essentially which is available prior to the effective date of the patent application it's the effective date uh, which typically uh, is before filing date of the uh, patent application and it can include any public document for example published patent technical publication journal articles conference papers websites any product catalogs marketing information and uh, the similar things right different types of patent searches so we uh, i already spoke about the freedom to operate in detail and when exactly it has to be conducted but there are few uh, popular kind of patent searches uh, the most popular is patentability search so it is to determine whether or not the inventive concept is known in the prior art uh, before you actually file the patent application so it is to decide the novelty and the obviousness or your of your invention okay it speeds up the prosecution of the patent so uh, uh, once you are done with the uh, prior work like to find out which are the prior arts in the domain and then you work on that and file the application then it is uh, a very good chance that you get a less number of objections in the uh, freedom to uh, sorry fer uh, first examination report uh, then it indicates the existing technology which could be problematic from the infringement perspective you try to avoid the infringement okay then state of the art searches so it is also known as uh, the landscape searches so what exactly is the state of the art or a landscape search so uh, before initiating any particular uh, r&d work uh, you need to assess whether the particular field of technology is uh, like uh, uh, who are the key players uh, how exactly is that particular domain is populated by the applicants so at that particular point you need to conduct this particular search so basically the information is uh, uh, derived from the business development point of view or the scientific leadership they all uh, they often uh, rely on the findings of this landscape search or the state of the art search to begin with any new uh, product development or uh, uh, or the technology uh then the freedom to operate search i've already spoken about this so to assess whether the product but the product a process or a service uh, infringes any patents which are owned by the others it gives you the opportunity for purchasing in licensing in uh, cross licensing or uh, inventing around yeah so be uh, before you begin with the search these are some key aspects to take into the account uh, i'm left with some 8 minutes i'll try to wrap up very quickly uh so you need to determine the purpose of the search of course for what purpose you are conducting a search whether to assess the patentability whether to assess the novelty inventive step or whether you are just trying to uh, find out the key players in any particular domain or whether you are trying to find out whether my product would be infringing somebody else's patent so identify the purpose then determine the type of the search accordingly like a patentability search is needed whether the landscape is needed or whether the fto is needed then it is important to understand the subject matter in detail so how do, would you understand the subject matter in detail so uh, the documents that uh, those have been provided by the inventors or the invention disclosure forms uh, uh, and the other things will help you to understand the subject matter in detail uh, determine the databases to be used like the free databases have the limited uh, number of results uh, available with them so uh, 
try to uh, have the uh, paid databases with you and then uh, uh, perform the search then you can also develop the search strategy this is a typical searching process patent searching process you start with developing the search strategy and then you perform search on the different databases uh, then you evaluate the results so how do you evaluate the results so uh, uh, if it is found in the title then it is less reliable because title is just a brief idea when it is seen in the abstract then uh, uh, that uh, like the abstract uh, should have the key terms but it does not often uh, reveal the patent uh, which uh, uh, like the key point of the or the key feature of the invention that is covered in the claims it is found in the specification or the uh, claims and definitely you can be certain that this patent is talking about the keyword that I am uh, trying to search and then uh, on the basis of that you can evaluate the results then analyze and summarize the results in uh, the different formats and then uh, the, uh, you report this uh, results uh, to the attorney or the inventor the landscape searches are often reported in the form of the histograms then different graphs uh, then uh, uh, grouping of different subject matters together discussing of the technology in details whereas the prior art search or the validity searches are uh, are uh, like they contain the table of patents applications uh, claim mapping feature mapping mapping etc and etc so this was the final this is the final step of uh, this patent searching process uh, the boolean searching so uh, as we all know the mathematics play a crucial uh, role in uh, the searching techniques so basic operators boolean operators as we all know are and or not and uh, when we make a use of or in uh, uh, two different keywords so i have shown the example here so graphene or cell would face the results of either terms like if graph is present in the uh, uh, in the patent uh, then it would face the result if the sale is uh, uh, written in the uh, sale is identified in the uh, uh, patent document then it would face that as a result and it would face uh, the result if at all both the words have been used okay uh, then coming to the AND operator, the graphene and cell would face the common results wherein the graphene as well as cell, both the terms have been used. NOT, so NOT is generally used wherein you need to ignore uh, a particular term completely. So if I use graphene, NOT, cell, then the patent would, uh, like the search query would yield the results wherein the cell is not at all disclosed but the graphene is disclosed so make of the uh, use of the boolean searching will uh, ease uh, uh, the process of searching the documents uh, these are the tips uh, from my experience uh, avoid using the generic words uh, like improve advantage benefits because these words you will find in almost 99 percent of the patents patent documents so uh, try to avoid using these generic words as your search strategy uh, try to start with a broad search then narrow down so take an approach uh, uh, of catching the fish think of it like uh, casting a wide net then tightening that net once you know that you have caught the right fish so start from a broader search perspective and then uh, narrow it down uh, then don't complicate your initial search query uh, by adding too many keywords just go on searching keyword by keyword then you'll come to know what exactly is the right strategy and if I'm getting the right uh, results out of uh, the combination of these keywords if you want to look into the specific keywords that are integral to the technology you're looking for then limit them to the claim section because as I said claim is uh, the most crucial part of the uh, patent document which essentially talks about the incremental invention or an incremental step and if you're very sure that it is uh, uh, this keyword has to be very essential for my searching then try to find that keyword in the claims uh, you'll land up with uh, the more number of uh, relevant results I uh, am very sure and the last point is when trying to find the similar patents use the citation as a starting point so each and every patent I believe has uh, the citations like a forward citation and a reverse citations so 
once you find that uh, no this particular patent is very relevant to what i am finding in what i am looking into uh, then try to find out uh, the forward and reverse citations those will uh, uh, add to your uh, uh, add to your list of uh, relevant patents patent searching is something which is a uh, art and it has to be uh, performed by the artist over the practice of the years trust me example search i'll take it at the end if the time permits so uh, these are some patent databases which are freely available to you uh, definitely there are some paid databases as well i'll not list down here but ipo indian patent office website gives you uh, the coverage of the all indian patent publications uh then epo european patent office uh, they have this uh, dedicated uh, 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 searching portal espacenet there you can also uh, perform the simple search advanced search by using the boolean operators so it is quite a good and gives you the fair uh, coverage uh, of the foreign uh, patent applications and the published patents uspto is essentially to search uh, the us patent documents wipo uh, world intellectual property office they have also the dedicate uh, designed the dedicated platform uh, known as a patent scope uh, and the free pins online this is a, a private uh, a platform created uh, and i find it useful quite a lot of times so these are the uh, some of the free patent databases yeah so now i am at the end of my presentation in the old way as you all know uh, we used to formulate hypothesis accumulate the data extensive data do extensive testing and extensive study till we grow old but uh, the old way uh, will not work any more and the new way is generate the uh, patentable idea inventive idea file the patent application get the grant over it and raise the million of rupees if not the million so thank you very much for the patient listening uh, uh these are my coordinates and uh, the floor is open uh, for the questions if any i'm sorry for the disturbances that you are able to hear from my background because uh, I have a daughter at my home so I thought of coming to a a, a common workplace where I could uh, I could be uh, presenting this but unfortunately uh, there are people around me I'm sorry for that The floor is open for the questions Thank you so much Yes, sir. can I start uh, with a small question? Uh, yes, sure, sure, ma'am. Uh, uh, actually, uh, we can go for any. Uh, the patent can be filed by an individual or a group, isn't it? Group of uh, some more than one people. Uh, so, in that case, if it is a group, uh, do all of them get the same credibility, or uh, there can be a variable credibility? yeah so by natural law uh, if there are more than one individual applicant uh, or uh, then uh, by natural justice the share would be divided equally amongst all of them unless and until there is an uh, agreement uh, which is uh, opposite to that like if the agreement says that uh, a particular person like uh, 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 manakshi ma'am he takes uh, 80% of the share then aditya takes uh, 10% and then uh, someone else takes 10% so unless and until there is this agreement into the force uh, the uh, the share of this particular property would be divided uh, as a equal like equally into the uh, number of uh, applicants okay okay thank you i hope uh, my uh, voice is audible because uh, there is a pop up message that shows uh, that that is telling me that my network is not stable uh no this sir yeah, yeah that's great uh sir we have a question from yeah, sarah ma'am yeah please uh, how to file a patent for an algorithm okay okay so this is a very nor uh, 
this is a very normal question uh, raised by the computer science people or the it people so uh, algorithm per se is not a patentable so it is a series of instructions it is not a patentable subject matter so uh, my suggestion would be because i used to handle the cases for uh, uh, microsoft and uh, other uh, it giants so my experience is uh, if you tag any particular uh, hardware with Uh, the functioning of any particular step so there is process step and you attach this particular step with the uh, hardware then probably you have a better chance to uh, uh, get the rights on this particular algorithm because simply uh, listing your uh, steps uh, or the process steps or the method steps in the form of the claims uh, like method claim or a process claim will not fetch or will not get the grant of the patent unless and until there is a mention of a hardware so i would say that uh, uh, executing particular uh, uh, instruction so this language itself is not a patentable subject matter but suppose take a example like i am performing one method one method step so the method step i would just say and then comma i would say which particular hardware is responsible for performing this particular step so let's say it is a processor let's say it is a memory let's say uh, uh, it is any particular hardware which is which could be any generic hardware so if you associate it, associate any particular hardware which is known or otherwise not known uh, to the uh, to the steps of the algorithm then i would say that you have better chance to argue with the controller uh, and uh, get the patent uh, for you and as i particularly told it has now uh, become very essential uh, to argue on the basis of the technical problem and the technical solution uh, 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 while dealing with such computer related cases so uh, controllers are not only looking into the hardware that has been used because they also know that uh, there are little, uh, little less scope in designing new hardware altogether so you will be using the known processors known displays known memories for performing those algorithmic steps so everybody knows that but the essence would lie into the technical problem and then technical solution and if there is any technical advancement so this approach uh, would uh, uh, be beneficial to get you the uh, patent rights on the computer uh, uh, program or many uh, maybe the algorithm thank you aditya thank you ma'am so is it a selfie time <laughs> darsh uh, uh, we have one more question from george uh, how to make something open source means i don't want a patent but i also want to make others are not patenting okay uh, yeah okay so uh, whatever the documents that are available into the public domain they are into a public domain they are uh, as good as the open source so you can simply publish your uh, research paper uh, in, into the public domain uh, like i triple e or the any other forum and uh, mm-hmm. you will stop others from patenting it like while conducting the prior art search or the patentability search we look into the novelty right and i spoke about uh, the novelty part like if uh, there is any document that speaks about uh, the same technology uh, or the same method same product then uh, he would not get the patent on that particular technology so simple is you can go ahead you can publish your uh, research work your invention into the public domain in the form of any publication or even simply you can file the patent application if you have a good amount of money with you you can simply draft the patent application you can file it and you can leave it uh, uh, as it is without uh, uh, going for the examination so it will be in a public domain after 18 months and then nobody would be able to uh, create a monopoly again over it there are uh, several ways okay so now we can move on to the selfie thing yes so i'm i request already, everyone to yeah yeah i'm already overboarded i'm sorry for that so i'm turning on the selfie
Thank you, Aditya. Oh, it's the last 20 seconds. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. No, okay. I request everyone to take the selfie. Because it's last 10 seconds and we'll end the group selfie. I'm ending the group selfie now. This way. Yeah. There it is. Oh, that okay. looks really nice. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you, Mr. Aditya. That was uh, uh, the session was very gave a good insight into the various aspects of uh, patents, patentability, patent search, etc. Uh, so, as a uh, token of our gratitude, we wish to present you with this uh, virtual memento. Uh, so, please join me. Can you share the virtual memento? Um, Ma'am, I'm not able to uh, present my screen from the uh, um, Firefox browser. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll I'll share the memento with you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes. Oh, thank you so much for the memento. It's so nice. And I'm really thankful to you, uh, like the team uh, behind running this show. And I wish all the success to you. Thank you so much. And uh, really thank to all the attendees who sacrificed their Saturday afternoon uh, sleep or the nap to attend this session. I hope that it was really helpful to you. Uh, do get in touch with me if you have any problems or if you have any questions or doubts. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aditya. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all attendees. And thank you, Shailaja, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. So we shall start with the next session now. Anupama Khamer said. Yeah, yeah, ma'am, I'm there. So, uh, shall I start, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. Ashutosh, sir, has not joined it. Uh, yeah, he's there. Still. Yeah, he's there, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, all. Yeah. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon. Thanks, thanks. thanks. Yeah, so uh, I'll be initiating the session. So, I present a red carpet welcome to our next speaker, Mr. Ashutosh, sir. So, uh, briefly introducing the speaker to the audience. So, Ashutosh has been working in the field of uh, intellectual property for over seven years. He has been closely associated with startups, SMEs, and individual innovators for protecting their intellectual property and providing cost-effective IP strategy. His expertise lies in drafting and prosecution of patent and design applications and has been instrumental in creating awareness about IP and has been an avid speaker on the topics revolving around IP creation and protection. Currently, he is working as a consultant for uh, intellectual property protection. And due to this, Ashutosh held position as assistant manager IP and tech transfer with Venture Center, India's largest science and business incubator. And he's also the registered Indian patent agent and has completed uh, the registered technology transfer uh, professionals course uh, organized by Society for Technology Management, that is uh, STEM, and has been uh, aggregated with uh, 59 credit points. He has pursued PG Diploma in Patents Law uh, from Nalsar University. Uh, prior to that, he has pursued PGDM by Technology Management and has a bachelor's degree in biotechnology from Pune University. He has worked on inventions related to biotechnology, biopharmaceuticals, medical devices, real sciences, and uh, various other domains. His interest lies in technology transfer, IP commercialization, and technology and IP evaluation. So uh, with this uh, brief introduction, I welcome Ashutosh for your talk. And over to you. Yeah, thanks for that uh, warm introduction. Uh, I hope my uh, screen is visible and I'm uh, audible to everyone. Yeah, you are uh, loud yes, here. Sir. 
great great all right so um, you know uh, the tough part has actually come to me now <laughs> to keep you awake and uh, you know keep you uh, enticed to the to the presentation uh, i i i hope to make justice to that and then you know really uh, the i i really like the theme of uh, this entire uh, seminar uh which is you know uh, specifically organized for the uh you know returning mothers who actually want to catch up with the industry after a long break and uh, uh you know uh, the earlier sessions which were also uh, contributed a lot uh, towards how and all um, uh, the women in this uh, particular uh, 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 the women who are curious to join uh, industry uh, how would they uh, be able to get back and contribute um in 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 the uh, development of the industry um uh, so the earlier sessions uh, you have heard about all sorts of uh, types of intellectual property how to do search uh, what are the aspects of uh, you know um, an invention which needs to be protected in terms of intellectual property filing uh let me uh, straight away go to the uh, session and begin with the uh, uh, presentation um so uh before we move into the drafting and looking at the filing procedures i just wanted to give you a quick recap of the things that you have learned maybe from the uh, morning sessions uh, uh you know so we have been discussing about uh, patents and trademarks and copyrights and industrial designs and everything uh but just to just to put things in perspective what i would uh, want to do is give you a formal definition of a patent uh which goes um as it's a property right granted by the government to an inventor to exclude others from making using offering for sale or selling the invention or importing the invention for a limited period of time and which becomes applicable from the date of filing in exchange of a public disclosure of the invention so in the earlier session you have uh, listened to aditya he was talking about what exactly is to be considered as an invention and you know what all uh, things are available for you to to protect it uh so patent is one of them um there are certain uh products which would also have uh, you know innovation in terms of uh, the the novel design of the uh, product so that is a separate intellectual property as you have uh, already uh, understood from the earlier sessions uh when we talk about patents it's it's again uh, you know very much territorial in nature meaning uh when you file a patent application in india um you cannot say that i have a you know patent protection in uh, multiple other countries as well uh, and vice versa so if somebody has filed a patent in japan or uh, us they might not be able to call that uh, or they, they might not be able to say that uh, you know uh, i have filed a patent in us which means essentially means that it will be getting a grant in uh, india Uh, for that the person has to go and file that patent in different countries of interest uh it also is a negative right so uh, many of you would be wondering that we are talking about uh, you know uh, you know creativity and innovation and uh, you know a, 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 a very you know positive atmosphere in a way then why do patents are a negative right there is a negative right for some simple reason that it is excluding others from uh, you know practicing your invention um and that's the reason it is also given for a limited period of time you cannot have a monopoly over certain things for you know perpetuity right so that's the that's the uh, real uh, reason behind keeping it for a limited period uh, period of time um it is also an right where an inventor can assert his rights or i would say applicant can assert his or her rights against the infringers from the date of publication of uh, the invention right so uh, uh it is it is it is of utmost importance that once you have an idea which you have think which you which you are thinking have you have reduced it to practice uh, you know that's the point when you should be actually going and filing for at least a provisional specification so as to secure the date uh, of the uh, patent filing patent is also a techno legal document which provides exclusive rights to the applicant or the patentee uh for the technical aspects of the invention which is disclosed in the specification so we are going to have a quick look into what all uh, is falling under when we talk about a patent specification uh again uh, as aditya was uh, discussing in the earlier session um patentability uh, we usually follow nuns test uh, 
non uh, standing for novelty utility non obviousness and there are certain statutory requirements under section 3 of the patents act and uh, you know sufficiency of disclosure of patent specification under section 3 uh, section uh, 10 um so before you uh, actually take up a patent uh, drafting exercise with you or you have uh, you know thought of drafting a patent application um you first of all have to look at uh, the patentability of course the novelty whether the the invention that you are proposing is new and is not available in the public domain you have to see whether it can be manufactured or applied in any kind of industry you have to also think about the non obviousness aspect of your invention such that it should not be obvious to uh, any person skilled in the art uh and uh, that very person should not come and say that oh uh, if you are trying to do a plus b uh, that is quite obvious and you may not be able to you know uh, in in uh, you know coming uh, uh, years or i would say in coming days you would not be able to respond to that in terms of the first examination report that is served to you once you file a patent application uh and of course there are certain statutory requirements uh, so section 3 as you've uh, you've seen that uh, you know it talks about uh, uh, inventions that are not patentable so those are inventions but then uh, in a way those are not patentable inventions right uh, so uh, we already have had a look at that uh now when we have been discussing about patents and what is patentable and what is not patentable but then once you have decided to file or draft a patent application uh, you also need to look at uh, who are the people who are going to look at your patent who, who would be the people who would be taking interest in what you are trying to develop uh, and who would be the people who will be able to recognize the uh, innovation or the inventive step that is uh, vested in your invention right so there are a couple of uh, you know uh, stakeholders uh, when you file a patent right so the first stakeholder is the patent office who is supposedly to give you the grant of the uh, you know patent uh, 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 patent grant uh, so the patent office looks at it from examination point of view in order to uh, convey to you some office actions some irregularities that are there in order to convey you certain notices and correspondences let it be regarding you know fulfilling certain requirements or the grant of the patent or if there is any hearing that is uh, you know pending uh, all sorts of things right so essentially a patent agents uh, 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 you know real work is uh, you know to act as a mediator between the inventor and the patent office because patent office requires the documents in a certain particular format and then uh, there are a couple of compliances that needs to be done uh, from the uh, applicant side also right <clears throat> the other uh, stakeholder is uh, uh, the courts right uh, so uh, you you have heard earlier that there could be post uh, pre grant opposition and post grant oppositions uh, or there could be any infringement suits that is uh, that are going on or you want to initiate certain infringement suit so any sorts of litigation related matters the courts will have a look at your patent um there could be a potential licensee of your technology of or of of, of your invention Uh, who who wants to license your technology because he feels that once uh, uh, he incorporates the technology into your uh, i mean your technology into his uh, business or his uh, 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 manufacturing processes it essentially is uh, you know uh, giving him uh, 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 a very refined kind of a product right so let's say you've, you've developed a chemical process or a catalyst and uh, that catalyst some ex company chemical company is wanting to have with them they also could be looking at the patent that you have filed for the catalyst essentially or the improved process that you have been able to develop right uh, next are the investors who would be wanting to invest in a startup which is essentially backed up by the patented technologies uh, so let's say take the same example of the catalyst that you have been able to develop and you form a startup mm-hmm. out of that and now you are looking at you know uh, certain funding uh, opportunities and you are in talk with some investors so you should be able to defend your case by saying that the patent is already filed or it is already granted and then you know that's so much of uh, value that uh, the company would be able to generate out of uh, uh, you know uh, creating it as a business model uh, so investor needs to be having a confidence into investing your uh, technology or the or the company then comes the competitors for understanding the technological development that you have been able to do uh, 
and if there is anything so essentially once the patent is filed what you are essentially doing is you are developing a, a platform for further uh, incremental innovation right so it's not that uh, once you have filed it is only on your name so anybody who is wanting to develop further to that can any time do that and once it is further to what you have developed uh, then it becomes not so obvious so that is the that is the crux of having you know uh, non of business very well defined in your patent specification um then comes the technical experts who are you know as it is looking at the uh, uh, public literature and you know the patent that are published uh, you know they want to uh, maybe they are looking at the trend that uh, uh, at which the technology is uh, you know advancing uh, so all of that needs to be taken into consideration uh, when it is about technical experts and lastly it is general public uh, for understanding the uh, the invention so let's say tomorrow if i tell you that you know Uh, i have developed a very unique product uh, which is able to you know probably uh, record everything that is happening in a particular room uh, maybe with the tone of your voice uh, if the system is able to uh, you know in a meeting if a, if a, you know the system is able to evaluate whether the meeting happened very uh, you know confidently or there were you know uh, literally up and downs in the tones and voices of people so it could it would give you a feedback kind of a thing so now uh, let's say as a layman if i am interested in knowing oh okay this is a very good technology and i need i am you know curious to know how exactly it uh, functions i can any time go and look up for the patent application which is there in the uh, patent office uh, website right so there are these people who are looking at your patent now why why i wanted to uh, give you a hint about it is uh, while drafting the patent specification you have to really really consider uh all of these points so let's say if i am drafting a very uh, powerful patent in terms of you know so that it gets a quick grant it doesn't attract any litigation matters it it, it you know helps me in transferring the technology also it helps me in developing my own uh, startup also you know so all these pointers are very essential when you are drafting a patent specification um and that's where we say that it's not only that uh, i mean the invention it has one side but then as a patent drafter you need to also add value while you are drafting it right it's it's not only that you've taken it from somewhere and then you know uh, put it into uh, the perspective as the patent office wants it right so uh, being a patent professional we need to be uh, upfront about all of these things that what purpose uh, the patent uh, filed patent application is going to serve right so all of that needs to be taken into consideration now to to quickly summarize we have had uh, you know uh, uh, earlier uh, sessions talking about this but then there are certain three requisites for tra- drafting a patent application the first and foremost thing is that you need to be very thorough with your uh, prior art search you need to know where exactly is the key feature of your invention might be able to claim uh, how and all is going to be your claim strategy how and all you is your going to be your uh, claim mapping if you are infringing on to uh, if you're infringing on to some existing patent you might need to you know change your vet your claims in order uh, to to circumvent certain uh, uh, existing uh, patent documents uh, once you do that you need to list the problems uh, that are existing in the prior art so that you are very clear now that uh, you know these are the problems which are still not being addressed and you are able to find out te- you have been able to find out a technical solution to those technical problems um you also got to list the problems which are being solved by your invention uh, that's where you are moving towards establishing the inventive step because the earlier prior art or the earlier existing documents were not able to address those problem which are being overcome with your solution or your invention so that's where you know the essentially essentially you are saying that our invention is technologically advanced than the existing patents um you need to also assert on that if there is any prior public disclosure uh, you know it it may happen that you uh, unintentionally or uh, you know in, in subconsciously you talked uh, about your invention with somebody else or you published a you know a blog or an article or a research paper for that fact um which you should be aware of that you know if you feel that uh, invention is novel um, inventive prima facie you should not do any kind of uh, uh, public disclosure let it be a blog let it be an article let it be even a screenshot or a photograph of the product that you have developed 
should not be floated out in the public domain. You should to you should be able to apply nuns test as I told you earlier, and of course there are you know section three uh, of the Indian Patents Act which I told you uh, which talks about inventions not patentable. Once you are having a go ahead about all of these pointers uh, that are written above, uh, you should be able to uh, proceed for the patent drafting. And before going there, you need to also take a call on whether you want to file a provisional and secure a date or directly file a complete specification which would have all sorts of re relevant data, examples, embodiments, and everything. And if you are sure that you know the product is almost ready, um, you know, and you should be able to you know generate data very quickly, uh, that's the point when you should be thinking of filing directly a complete specification. Or else, if you are wanting to you know take some time, uh, go back and then see uh, you know you want to evaluate whether your patent is going to be fruitful after uh, the end of twelfth uh, month or not. You should be able to file a uh, provisional specification. So, in a way, there are two uh, types of specifications that you can file. One is called a provisional specification, and the other one is a complete specification. Uh, we would we would uh, look into the details um, uh, about uh, when it is called as a provisional and when it is called as a complete specification. So, in a Typically, a patent specification is divided into description and claims. So now, uh, let's jump into uh, you know claims uh, for time being. Um, so when we talk about a provisional specification, claims are not required to be submitted. Okay, it's uh, provisional is like giving a broad idea about what you are working on, what would be eventually uh, you know coming out as a solution. Uh, what are the all the possible ways by which you will be able to uh, you know uh, give out the proper uh, technical solution to the technical problem that you are trying to solve right uh, so the only difference between a provisional and a complete specification is that uh, the claims you know uh, and that in itself uh, defines the uh, you know the boundary uh, around an invention like we have uh, um, around our houses there is a, a boundary wall right uh, we we call it a compound wall right um that 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 essentially means that you will not be able to go out of that compound wall or the boundary and you will not also be allowing anybody in uh, inside that boundary and build something uh, and call it something as of their own right so that's the that's the uh, uh, you know uh, i would say um, parallel uh, i would want to draw in terms of claims so in claims you do the exact same thing you you in the claims you give a statement of technical facts uh, which are uh, expressed in legal terms so, so such that you are also confining yourself to your invention and not essentially keeping it very broad so that you know uh, it becomes very generic in nature uh, that's not how uh, the claims would be uh, looking nice in a granted patent um, uh, claims also define exactly what is claimed by the invention so there could be uh, you know n number of processes that you are trying to follow but then out of that only two three processes are when put together are contributing to the novelty and uh, inventive step so you need to focus on only those two three processes that you are trying to uh, you know implement in your specification so as to maybe improve the quality of the product or in in pharmaceuticals i would want to give you the example of uh, the bioavailability or the efficacy of the formulation you know all sorts of things uh, so the only difference between the provisional and complete is the claims part, right? Uh, so we just uh, quickly have a look at uh, the provisional specification. What all can be mentioned in a provisional specification? Uh, and this is comes th this this needs to be handy to you so that you are able to draft the specification very quickly. Uh, in 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 a matter of maybe uh, two to three uh, days, you should be able to come up with a rough draft of your provisional specification, right? Uh, so uh, when you should be thinking of filing a provisional when the invention is at an ideation phase and has been reduced to uh, practice uh, a little bit and you are you are having a feeling of that it will give me some promising or positive results about the working right that's the point when you should be thinking of filing a provisional specification it can be a little broad and uh, but you should be able to make sure that the scope of the invention is very well mentioned uh, and um, later on, it should not happen that uh, uh, you have missed out on uh, saying certain things in the provisional specification, uh, which ought to be there, but you did not do it. Uh, that might attract ob objections uh, when the patent application proceeds further for the examination and everything. 
right? So it is also okay to list down maybe eight to ten embodiments of your invention in the provisional specification and sticking to only two or three uh, embodiments in the complete specification. But because you have got twelve months of time to you know further consolidate on that particular uh, um, uh, uh, you know uh, idea, which is which can be reduced to practice. Right. So twelve months is a very good amount of time in order to work on it, build some prototypes, develop it uh, to an extent that it is workable and everything. Right. Uh, because once you file uh, a provisional specification, it must be followed by a complete specification within twelve months of uh, from the date of filing of the provisional specification. And this deadline is primarily given so that once you file a provisional, you should be able to develop it to an extent. Uh, uh, that you are able to say that now I'm you know I'm fished with everything I have been able to de- generate enough data for the uh, invention and I'm ready to file for the complete specification, right? Um, I will not uh, touch upon this. This is very much discussed, but uh, you know essentially why you file a provisional is that um, that you want a priority date uh, and the date of application of the patent, which is. um the date uh, on which you have filed your first application uh, or the provisional application um uh, it also gives an advantage over uh, um any other invention that is being developed in the same field uh, so that you can claim your priority um, uh, from from the date from which you have uh, you know filed the provisional specification as i told you you have got 12 months of time Uh, to completely develop and define the invention, and by the end of twelve month, you should be able to file uh, draft and file the complete specification with the claims, right? Um, uh, after filing the provisional specification, you can also say that the patent is pending. So you know some uh, uh, some companies who are into product development at all, uh, they want uh, uh, you know uh, this patent pending label on their uh, packaging or manufacturing uh, details. Uh, you know, so that they make aware other people, uh, make other people aware about uh, that they have uh, filed a patent application, and then there should not be any uh, uh, any further development, uh, which is very similar, uh, or else it will be considered as an infringement once that patent gets a grant. Okay. Uh, 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 yeah. So um, talking about the complete specification, so as I told you, uh, you have to file it within twelve months of time. Uh, now in the complete specification as i told you uh, it is um, backed up by the things so it should fully and particularly describe the invention so in the provisional specification what we drafted was a very um, was a very broad kind of uh, picture you know we we tried to incorporate certain elements into the uh, provisional specification which would make it a little broad uh, but you know maybe 10 months down the line you are actually ready with the uh, entire uh, working prototype of your invention or you are certain about um, this is how the process will take uh, 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 take place and this is what the yield of the process would be uh, that is the time when you file a complete specification and that's where you should be saying that uh, you should be able to fully and particularly describe the invention it should also contain the operation or use and the method in which it is to be performed right so that anybody uh, who is um, uh, able to reduce it to the practice in public domain should be able to do, replicate it actually uh, not just perform it but they should be able to replicate and come up with the same solution that you have proposed in the uh, complete specification right but that is only uh, allowed um, uh, to be done um, in in uh, uh, non commercial activities only right so anybody who is trying to do it for commercial activities it again would be considered as uh, you know infringement if the patent is granted now uh, it also uh, should be able to disclose the best method of performing the invention uh, which is known to the applicant so there should not be anything which you have missed out uh, on saying uh, in a complete specification uh, because later on if you want to say that oh i need to there's no there's no uh, there's no provision of adding continuously you know adding data to your specification or uh, uh, adding uh, certain description into your specification uh, it's one time process and only when the examiner is allowing you to do so uh, then you can do so but then again we have to stick to certain um, uh, constraints which are uh, written in our pitch act very very uh, prominently 
that you will not be able to add additional material into the uh, specification which was originally submitted right that's the way, that's where uh, i wanted to draw your attention toward to, uh, towards the provisional specification because that in itself should be um, broader enough in order to accommodate all the possible modifications of your uh, complete specification or uh, whatever you have been able to reduce down to the practice now uh, as we were seeing uh, there were uh, you know description and the claims are the contents of the specification uh, in the description now you have to describe the invention comprehensively we should be able to explain the problem to be solved with examples so earlier what we were saying is that we should be able to explain the problem to be solved only but now in the complete specification you have to give out examples to the effect that you know it indeed is incremental or it is improved version of the existing systems right uh, it should be adequate and sufficient so as to enable the person skilled in the art to perform and repeat the invention without your inputs without inventors inputs right so that's where i was uh, saying that uh, anybody who is wanting to replicate uh, the process that you have defined in your uh, patent specification Uh, he or she should be able to replicate that and arrive at the same conclusion okay uh, now uh, it's just a repetition of the claims uh, from the earlier slide so it should as i said it should basically define the boundary of your invention right mm, these are the typical uh, contents of a description so when you start drafting a patent specification you need to focus on uh, the title uh, the field of the invention the background of the invention the prior art details uh, what is the objects uh, or the objective of your invention why you and what is the purpose of your invention how and all you are able to reduce it to the practice so you need to issue a statement of the invention in in the patent draft also you need to provide a detailed description of the invention so is that uh, how and all you are trying to mix certain components together to arrive at a formulation which could be potentially used in uh, what all um, uh, you know uh, uh, diseases or um, uh, what what all uh, applications uh, that you want to uh, uh, you know uh, develop it for uh, it should also needs to have claims which is not mandatory in the provisional specification and then there are certain drawings that you need to uh, put in place in order to better um, uh, make make people better understand your invention the functionality of it the assembly of it let's say if it is a mechanical invention uh, in the mechanical invention it's all about assemblies and how they are uh, in correlated or uh, interrelated with each other by what sort by what means you know so all that you can uh, you know you you should be able to replicate in the form of the drawings and then you should be able to say that hey uh, this is how uh, you know uh, i would want to keep my drawings uh, uh, and that should be uh, effectively complemented with the detailed description of the drawings as well right and lastly the abstract um, now uh, in the earlier session we were looking at the search techniques and what are uh, you know strategies that are there for the search um, so search could be done from all of these so basically app title and abstract are the are the basic tools which a patent searcher would want to uh, keep in mind before initiating a search right Uh, um, so if you, if if i want to um, you know let's say search for a patent which you which one of you has filed um, and it is available in the public domain um, if i want to you know find similar patents i would you know look at the abstract because usually the abstract is the first thing that is uh, mentioned in the bibliographic page of the patent application and the title as well right but when you dig deeper into it then you will find what is the field what is the background what are the problems being solved all of that but in order to come up with a very quick search strategy what i will need to look at is the title and the abstract okay uh, later on as and when you you know you want to have a comprehensive search strategy you would want to delve into the other aspects of the description but i was telling the title should reflect the main art of the invention so what exactly is that you have developed it should be very precise meaningful and should provide the crux of the invention you should not be able to you know uh, elaborately talk about your title uh, and what all things that it can do and all of that uh, you have to you have to restrict the title to 15 words only you know there is a there in, in, in the patent rules talks about the limit on to the uh, number of words that you can use in title and that is 15 words then comes the field of the invention Uh, so in the field of the invention you should be able to describe the scope of the invention as i was telling you earlier and also the subject matter of the invention 
so which field uh, or in which technology domain you are trying to develop the invention right this is used by the uh, patent examiners or the uh, uh, you know in order to classify the invention in certain uh, categories of uh, uh, invention there are certain uh, uh, in, uh, international patent classification codes and uh, uh, there are certain uh, uh, codes that are assigned to uh, the particular patent application or the invention um, for that the field of the invention is mandatorily needs to be put then coming to background of the invention uh, as i was earlier explaining you need to explain the technological domain in which the invention is related you need to also uh, focus on the problems faced by the current solution uh, or the disadvantages that are existing in the uh, in the prior arts let it be a public uh, document uh, non patent uh, document or a, pub, a patented document um, and again uh, problems that have not been solved by the prior art so essentially what you are trying to do is you are creating a background of why uh, there is a need of uh, the invention that you have been able to uh, you know develop right and then you go and talk about the object so now uh, you, then here you will talk about so yeah uh, so now the objective of the the, the current invention is to do uh, you know so and so right or to provide a system for as i was giving you an example earlier of a system which will capture the uh, tone in the voices and everything uh, uh, so it should be able to uh, you know clearly reflect the advantages what all the advantages what is the purpose of the invention and um, all the objects and advantages of the invention should be described in separate sentences so there could be multiple of objectives of your invention which uh you may be able to achieve uh, uh, by by uh, performing the invention right now in the statement of the invention you need to focus exactly on to the novel features of the invention because in the background you already told that you know prior art has having so many components x y z and all of that um and assembly so and so but then how would you want to distinguish yourself uh, in terms of the available prior art Uh, that you need to put down in the statement of the invention and you should be talking about exact novel features of the invention you should be um, you know clearly reflecting the inventive features of the invention over the prior art uh, that essentially is required for establishing the inventive step or the non obviousness so that nobody should come and say oh a plus b is becoming obvious uh, how how well you are able to uh, you know defend your case in uh, in that uh, sense you know uh, and statement of the invention is something which forms the main claim so like uh, there are there are types of claims um, there is a, a independent claim which is the first claim of a patent application and there are dependent claims which are dependent on the independent claim um, you know uh, then then comes the summary so you need to provide a concise summary of the invention uh, highlighting the uh, distinguishing novel features of or the advantages then comes the detailed description here uh, is where when you have to talk about um uh, you know best mode of uh, performing the invention you should be able to uh, explain the invention in greater details as i was uh, talking to you earlier about putting out examples putting out comparative features like uh, existing uh, patented technologies are having so many features but then ours is uh, you know um, incremental to what uh, the other patents are talking about um and then comes the abstract so it should also contain the technical field the technical problem the solution of the problem that you have been able to solve through the invention and of course the uses of invention so where and all it is having industrial applicability because in the nuns test that's what we saw uh, first of all it should be novel it should be uh, having utility and it should also have the um, uh, technical advancements right and it should also comply with the Uh, statutory requirements that are given in the act uh, any any doubt still now uh, i i again did not wanted it to be a kind of uh, you know one way communication uh, if uh, if there are any questions in the meantime uh, i am free to address those um, uh, are there any questions hello hello yeah yeah currently there are no questions sir i see i see okay all right so let me just uh, continue with the with the flow uh, and uh, maybe at the end of the towards the end of the session if there are any questions uh, we will be able to uh, take those up sure 
Yeah. So yeah. So uh, coming back to the claims, which is a very essential part of uh, the patent specification, because that's where you are saying that uh, I want to, uh, you know, build a legal boundary around my invention, right? So mm, claims usually are used to define the scope of the protection provided by the patent application. Uh, so the very first thing that why we wanted to file a patent application was to say that I am so and so working on so and so technological domain. I have developed a solution in in that technological uh, technology domain, and which I feel is novel uh, for these many uh, uh, you know factors that I have considered. It is also uh, not very obvious to the person skilled in the art. Uh, by way of saying that you know i have got uh, you know results which are incremental to the existing solutions that are out there right so but then how you uh, how you reciprocate it in the form of the claims is that uh, you write a claim uh, which is very novel in the first place right um, these are these claims are written in approximation of the abstract of the inventive concept uh, which you have been able to create and it should define the limit of the patent protection also so it, you that's what i said that you not keep on saying that oh my invention is able to do so many things no it would it won't work then it would be very broadly claimed kind of a uh, invention right um, when you are talking about claim uh, you need to be very specific and concise so usually uh, the approach that we follow is a funnel uh, funneling down effect right so in the provisional you have mentioned it very broadly and towards the end of the 12th month you have been able to you know modify it develop it and make it very concise so that uh, if you have seen the funnel shape uh, you know it, it boils down to the particulars right uh, so that's how the while you are drafting the specification you have to keep a you know funneling kind of a, a strategy so that you are boiling down essentially to the uh, the crux of the invention uh, as it as the claims are the most important aspect as i was telling and it needs to be drafted in a meticulous way to cover all aspects of the invention uh, now the, these all aspects of the invention could be uh, all the other embodiments that you have been able to develop uh, let's say you have uh, in the recent covid times people have been able to develop different kinds of face masks and face shields and everything right you must have also seen that there are uh, nowadays there are some transparent masks masks that are coming in the market you know uh but it's a mask eventually right here in the transparent mask there is no filter there is this just transparent mask that is being worn right so the novelty is it in itself is there once you say that it is a transparent mask the current masks that you use are uh, you know layered mask and everything but the moment you say that it is a transparent it in itself adds a novelty but is it is it obvious yes it is obvious because it is doing the same task of you know filtering out or you know stopping the external pathogens to enter into your uh, nasal or uh, mouth cavity right so it may not be counted as the um, uh, what i would say uh, uh, it will not satisfy the criteria of obviousness per se um, but yes if there is uh, if you i don't know if you have seen there are certain masks that have come up uh, the the uh, some companies and uh, uh, they have been able to develop a mask i'm forgetting the name of the company but they have been able to develop a mask which will actually uh, detect whether you have captured covid or not right there is some uh, sensor chip that they have installed onto the exterior of the mask uh, which essentially tells that whether there is a contact from the viral load or not right so then it becomes technologically advanced also now you have upgraded the version of the uh, normal mask which is uh, uh, you know having certain filtration membranes inside and then all of that uh, it is actually doing some additional feature also it is having some additional feature of detecting the covid 19 also uh, so that's where you uh, are able to say that it is technologically improved and it is very uh, very much non obvious in nature right so in order to draft a claim for certain uh, such type of inventions you have to you know cover all aspects of the invention now you need not restrict it to only covid 19 
we should be able to expand it to other uh, infections that have been uh, uh, captured by that person or not whether all those uh, infections are getting covered or not all of those uh, uh, features or as aspects needs to be covered in the form of the claims as well right now when we write a claim uh, it needs to be uh, presented in two parts one is preamble and the, the, the come then comes the body of the claim with a transitional word or a phrase between the uh, the body of the claim and the preamble so i just want to give you a quick example of how a claim look like uh, i have given a patent number also here you can any time later on and i wanted to take a very simple example for a claim uh, i did not wanted to have a very complex uh, uh, example for the claim um so the uh, claim goes like a method to produce ethanol at a very high yield you know that's where your preamble should end now in the claim in the, this is a first claim and first claim of any patent application is a independent claim and rest all the claims that you would want to write would be dependent on the first claim right so the, your preamble should as i was telling it should contain the title of the invention it should uh, also give you the um, industrial application of your invention right so the industrial application here is to produce ethanol and what is the inventive step here is it is giving you a very high yield so that counts for the novelty and the uh, inventive step and the industrial application as well so preamble should be able to cover all of that then comes the transition phase so depending on the type of the invention the transition would, uh, phase phrase would differ because it's a method or a process it is saying uh, comprising if it has been uh, 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 i would say uh, uh, a process of a maybe electronic device it would have consisting the steps of right uh, or if it is a uh, uh, device it would again talk about consisting so device consisting so and so components right and then so the, the st steps of the uh, or the method of uh, producing the ethanol at a very high yield are like a and b right so when there is some culture of uh, microorganisms in a medium comprising some carbohydrate source and acetic acid mixture and then there is a you know there is a chemical conversion of happening of certain salts and acids that are there right that count as the body of the claim okay so here is where your first claim stops okay and now depending on that there will be multiple such claims so i would uh, request you to i'll share the presentation also Uh, i would request you to go through this very uh, patent document that is uh, the number is given um, and you can see how a, uh, how an uh, uh, independent claim which is the first claim it is written and how a dependent claim is written based on and taking antecedent basis from the first claim um, uh, so in a in a claim you need to be very sure that uh, you are um, as i was uh, also mentioning earlier all aspects of the invention should be captured in the first claim so that you can give dependency on the uh, ongoing claims right it should not happen at any point of time that you have not disclosed anything in the first claim and then you are saying that as claimed in claim 1 uh, i want to add this 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 also to the mixture that is uh, pro uh, proposed in the uh, claim 1 that will uh, attract objections as to uh, it is not having enough antecedent basis or Uh, if you have mentioned some things in the claim which were not at all part of the uh, description uh, uh, and the other headers in the description then also the examiner is liable to say that you have not given any uh, uh, reference to this in your specification which you have submitted as a provisional or a complete specification right so here is where i would want to uh, conclude with the drafting part uh, Uh, drafting as i told you uh, varies uh, depending on the uh, type of the invention that you have uh, developed depending on the strategies that you have been able to develop uh, uh, for the for the drafting part specifically uh, uh, there are certain instances where your ip strategy would be or the patent strategy would be um, that uh, you want to just uh, you know create a boundary of uh, patents so that nobody should uh, you know uh, uh, pro probably bypass your patents or circumvent your patent and then come up with a uh, different solution in terms of a patent document or a claim strategy right uh, or it could be that you just want to say that i want to defend myself from the uh, you know infringement right uh, th these are the some of the strategies that you need to implement while you are uh, you know uh, drafting the specification 
uh, and most of it uh, you know actually um, you come to know um, when you are actually writing the specification or you are drafting a patent specification that's when you would also get some more insights because you are then uh, you know quite acclimatized with the with the invention right uh, one thing that i forgot to tell you is that before even before uh, you know uh, 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 prerequisites for drafting the patent when i was talking about doing a thorough prior art search and everything uh, there is one very crucial step that happens which is called as a invention disclosure meeting so in this invention disclosure meeting the the inventor uh, or the applicant for the patent needs to disclose the uh, patent specification or the invention in a very elaborate manner and as a patent drafter you need to understand or extract the novelty and inventive step then and there itself such that you are able to then carry out the prior art searches then you are able to draft the specification then you are able to draft the claims uh, usually uh, when uh, the disclosure is given you should be able to come up with uh, the first independent claim uh, quickly uh, in a way that you know you decide the further uh, path of your patent application so if you look at closely the contents of the description or the patent specification it's kind of a story line right you are wanting to give a title to a movie then you are wanting to you know uh, define the uh, in what genre it would be you know if it is a horror movie or if it is a action movie or it is a comedy movie right then you you know create that background you need you know some characters um, those are the objects then you would give a role to those characters then you, there you are defining the statement then you are giving the dialogues um, then you are putting down the summary then you are building the entire um, you know screenplay and everything so it's uh, if you if you if you have an analogy to um, you know of drafting um, to a movie uh, then this is how i would want to put it eventually what you want to convey is that this is where we are you know creative this is where we feel that we are innovative and there are certain ways uh, as laid out by the patent act uh, by which you, you are able to do it uh, so i think you know drafting a specification is is a skill and uh, it it evolves over a period of time that's it if you are really interested in taking up uh, you know intellectual property as a career Uh, in patents itself uh, there are multiple of avenues where you would want to excel and advance right so patent drafting is one of those uh, avenues where you know essentially you can develop skills and you know uh, if you're good at writing uh, i i would urge that you know because it is uh, uh, the very conference the motive of the conference is that you know all those uh, uh, women uh, enthusiastic women who are wanting to get back to the industry in, and contribute in uh in the in the development of the industry um you would want to really really look into uh, how to really draft the patent application and i uh, take it from me that it will not over evolve over you know uh, you know over a period of time just by reading the patent documents you need to actually you know bring it down to the practice and that's what we are also talking about uh, in terms of the inventions also you know it should not be just into a written format it needs to be reduced to the practice and only then you will be able to draft the proper claims i just want to move to the next uh, part of our uh, session which is about filing procedures uh, so uh, there are certain things that you need to do when you have you know defined everything you've you know drafted a very good patent application now it is the time that you need to actually file the patent application so dra- uh, uh, once the this so the flow goes like something like this so first happens the disclosure meeting then the patent uh, professional drafts your patent application uh, he puts the he or she puts the patent uh, or the invention into a perspective which is accepted by the patent office as in terms of that the patent application is to be filed now so once you file uh, you either will be filing a provisional specification or a complete specification so uh once you are you have filed a patent application which is a provisional specification in this case uh essentially you have secured a priority date as i told you then you have got 12 months of time to file the uh, complete specification right uh, but the publication of that only will happen if you have filed a uh, a, a complete specification in the first place which essentially is between uh, 0 to 18 months at at 12th month it would be happening right um let me just select a pointer yeah 
So uh, once you file complete specification somewhere in, in the middle here, uh, your patent application ideally should get published. Okay. And from that date onwards, anybody who is of the opinion that, oh, this is very obvious, this is very novel, they should be able to file a pre grant opposition and the rest of the things will follow. Okay. Now, if that doesn't happen and if your uh, you know, a patent application is published, so this is a 18 months. So within 18 months, you're or off, on or after the expiry of the 18 months, uh, your patent application will, will be available in the public domain to be viewed by everybody. And uh, everybody is the people whom I earlier told you in my earlier slides about, right? And then within 48 months of time, you have to uh, file something called as a request for examination. So now this can be done with the current uh, uh, amendments in the act. This could also be expedited in a way by filing form 18A uh, and that is available um, uh, for uh, people who are either startups or uh, who have uh, selected uh, uh, India as the international search authority. Uh, after that, so this is a mandatory phase. If you don't do, if you don't file the request for examination, your patent application may get abandoned. Okay, so this is a very essential and important step. Then after that, there is a first examination report that is issued to you. You have got uh, six months of time to file the response and address the objections which have been raised by the uh, examiner in the exam report. It could be formal objections. It could be technical objections. You, have, you need to overcome all of that by saying that how and all your invention is going to be different from the cited prior arts. After uh, the submission of the, um, uh, uh, the response, if the examiner is not uh, you know, convinced, uh, he would issue something called as a second examination report, which is something uh, SER or else he will, uh, uh, you know, uh, ask you for a hearing. If in the hearing he is convinced that, okay, now he is in a, he or she is in a position to say that the patent is granted, the patent gets a grant or it gets refused. So, and they, um, they usually give out the, uh, you know, uh, the criteria or the, or the um, parameters for the refusal of the patent application also. Um, then this grant is notified to uh, uh, the public at large by way of a publication. So after the patent is granted, also there is a publication grant as well. Uh, and after that, within one uh, one year's time, if somebody uh, who is um, considered to be a uh, person interested, um, they can go and file for the post grant opposition and it might get either refused or uh, it might get granted. And then they, that in, if the post grant opposition is uh, granted, then again, the entire like the patent that you filed uh, is 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 uh, deemed to be not having any effect as such, right? So this is overall the filing procedure. I'll just quickly walk you through. Uh, is, there are certain forms that you need to uh, file while you're you know filing a patent application. Um, so there is form one for application for the grant of the patent. There's form two which encompasses provisional and also the complete specification. This form three in which you gave a statement and undertaking that you have not or you have filed uh, any patent application, uh, you know, corresponding to the similar invention outside India. So you have to you have to also report this to patent office after every six months of, uh, you know, uh, from the date of first filing. You have to also give declaration as to inventorship. So who all are the uh, inventors in the uh, in the present invention? You have to put out a declaration that oh, these are the inventors who have been able to work on this invention. Then there's something called as a form nine, which is request for publication. Um, though there is a natural flow and the publication will happen uh, depending on the strategies of a particular enterprise, they might want to do, let's say, request for expedited examination of the patent, right? In which case you need to file form nine, right? Or if you want to just let people know that, you know, I have filed a patent and this is where I am working, you can just uh, immediately along with the complete specification also file for the request for publication so as to make your competitors and people who are interested in, you know, taking up this technology um, uh, aware uh, that uh, you are working on so and so technological domain, right? And of course, there's this form 26, which is uh, usually given to uh, a patent agent. Uh, uh, which which uh, you know gives the authorization to a patent agent to uh, act on your behalf uh, for any uh, uh, matter or any proceeding under the act right i've also mentioned a link for the fees uh, that are uh, uh, 
charged for all of these forms that are there and there are certain other forms also but for the sake of uh, filing of the patent specification these are the requisite forms and of course after the patent is granted uh, you need to pay something called as a patent renewal and maintenance fees so i've given it uh, given a screenshot of the fee structure and it is uh, as you might be aware the patent is valid from the date of filing for 20 years the the, the lifetime of the patent is a 20 years so uh, if you want to you know maintain that patent till the 20th year uh, you need to pay a uh, certain maintenance fee for uh, you know per year right and uh, as and when the uh, as and how the year of maintenance goes the fees is also naturally bound to increase right so i think uh, i'll i'll end with this uh, here uh, these are my coordinates i am very much happy to uh, answer if there are any questions uh, uh, and i think i'll end my uh, slide share here and i am willing to take up any questions as to uh, if there are any questions from your side hello yeah yeah there i hope i have been able to create uh, uh, enough interest amongst people it's it's a very uh, if you look at it it's a very um, complex subject to begin with uh, but the more you want to enter into it and then you you know uh, learn about it it becomes a little fairly easier to understand uh, how and all all this process has takes place hello sir am i audible yeah yeah you are you are yeah Uh, we have one question from Sailaja ma'am. Uh, yeah. How many numbers of independent claims are allowed? Um, so there is no limit as to how many uh, number of independent claims that you can have, but uh, it is always preferred that you um, you keep it not more than two. So uh, let's take an example of an invention which is. Uh, um, let's take an example of uh, automation system per se right you have fixed a uh, camera uh, and it is able to you know identify certain abnormalities in the in the product right uh, let it be a fruit inspection camera uh, for that example um, so now there is certain system components that are involved so the system components could be you know your different sensors your uh, monitors and your camera all of that uh, image acquisition models uh, i would uh, want to say um so for the system components you can have one uh, independent claim and the method by which you are actually able to you know detect the abnormality in the product that method uh, can have a separate uh, independent claim um so that's how i would want to put it okay uh, now if we take just some simple device uh, so let's say we were taking the example of a mask which i was talking about in that mask you would not want to you know uh, uh have too many independent claims because that also essentially dilutes your scope of the uh, invention if you are having too many independent claims there is first of all there is no need to have too many independent claims at the max if the invention is related to you know this usually happens when it is a invention related to the computer related inventions where there is a amalgamation of the hardware and the software so you really can't uh, put it in one independent claim only because there are certain methods that are certain there are certain processes that are happening separately of the hardware components right so in which case you might want to uh, you know segregate the claims in terms of uh, the uh, um the process claims and the uh, system claims right so in the system claim you would say that uh, the system is comprising of uh, you know 1 2 3 x y z hardware and uh, there is maybe a algorithm which is there which is soft module which is controlling those hardwares right so that can form a system component claim but when it comes to actual implementation like how those um uh, uh how those hardware components are being regulated by the software at the back end that essentially is a method uh, claim or a process claim we would want to segregate that uh, with the help of uh, you know independent claim so there could be one independent claim for the system and one independent claim for the method 
but that said it's a general there's no written rule as to how many number of independent claims can be there in the patent specification uh one more thing that i wanted to add here is that uh no you have to pay for uh, the claims that you add it cannot happen that you are keeping on adding you know 30 50 claims you know after 10 claims you have to pay for <laughs> every claim that you add so in order to be very cost effective in nature you have to you know be very concise and crisp when you are talking about claims uh, or even if you are writing a claim i hope i answered that question there uh, shailesh ma'am yes sir yes Yeah, Thank you so yeah. much. Yes. Do we have uh, any questions? Uh, no, I don't know. Thank you, Ashish. Yeah. Ashish. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I actually would want to uh, thank uh, entire um, uh, Returning Mother Conference team and I Triple E uh, for having uh, you know first of all this session. I actually incidentally came to know about this from. Uh, Uh, shailaja ma'am that there is such conference that exists um, you know and i am very much delighted to, to be a part of it and would you know equally would want to contribute uh, you know in in your upcoming uh, workshops and seminars as well um, uh, and it's a it's a very great platform and the very fact that you know uh, this conference is held uh, i like the idea of the conference as well Uh, you know it it all it is all about putting things in perspective and working towards developing professionals uh, in the industry so that's a, that's a very fantastic initiative i want i must say yeah. so thanks thanks a lot for the uh, providing the platform and giving an opportunity to you know talk and enlighten you about all those aspects thanks a lot yeah thank you ashutosh for a wonderful and insightful talk So uh with this I request the technical team to kindly upload the uh mento on the screen please for our speaker. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so uh, this is the token of appreciation from our side. Wow, that's that's great. I really liked it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Thank you so much for your contribution. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, Sorry, we shall have a group selfie. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, please, please. We are about to forget that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's a unique interface also i must say um, uh, yeah struggled uh, in the beginning but then i now i'm uh, finding out very uh, uh, very good utility of this platform this is yes. indigenously developed for uh, this conference or how is it no this is uh, the platform uh, which was already existing which we see. are using for great for great the- great So I'm ending the group selfie. Here it is. Yeah. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks, Darsh. Thanks, uh, Shaila Jamam, and every uh, team member uh, who has relentlessly might have worked to uh, bring this to uh, this level. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Ashutosh. Thanks. Thank you, Anupamo, ma'am, Darish, Pooja, and all the attendees. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, bye. So we shall Thank meet you, uh, at four pm again for the plenary talk. Next plenary talk. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Have a good day. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.